Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters all over the world. I'm Yahoo the Ben Israel. I'm a Hebrew servant of the Most High Yah and was sent to teach my people the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But today, I got another special treat for the world. This is Brother Alicia debating three guys out of Canada, Tor 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 Toronto, Canada. He was in Canada years ago debating these three guys. So I'm going uh, <clears> to. <throat> I'm going to let Brother Alicia uh, show you a video of him debating these three guys. So, come on. Yes, sir. Acts, 
given to him for possession, and who seek after him when he was when he said he had no child. And God speak of his wives, that if he shall secure in a strange land, and they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil for four hundred years. Again, they're accepted on the judgment seat, and the Israelites ask them, what are you talking about? What are you doing? What are your people running about here causing all this tragedy? And he says, man, and brother, listen to these words. Our father Abraham, God promised him this, God promised him that. God told Abraham, the church will be in a strange land. These are not the words of any other person but his life. And God speaks on his life that his seed shall be in a strange land, and he shall treat them into bondage, and he treat them evil for four hundred years, and that nation to whom they shall be in bondage, like just said God, and after that, Shall they go forth and serve me in this place? And he gave the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham began Isaac. And circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac began Jacob. I find nothing new in action than those of the Old Testament. I find nothing new with this land that all the other people of God have spoken. And he gave the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham began Isaac. And circumcised the eighth day, and Isaac began Jacob, and Jacob began to call patriarchs. And so patriarchs moved with enemy and sold Joseph to the Egypt. But God was with him. But God was with him. Which God do you think he's talking about? The God of Israel. And delivered him out. Of all his affliction, and gave him favor and wisdom and sight and peril, king of Egypt, and he made a covenant over Egypt and all his house. God was with him. If Stephen was, as some people say, a Christian, he was in Jesus was with him. And Jesus said this, and Jesus did that. He said, The God of glory appeared unto Abraham. And that same God brought him out of the land of Egypt. Which God was out of the mountain top. And, and the literary mountain of the Christian, and gave him favor and wisdom and sight of the king of Egypt, and made him govern over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dirt over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers, scripture say that, and our fathers found no such thing. Who was his father? The Israelites were born in Egypt. Ain't nothing new here. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he said, Our fathers first. And the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren. And Joseph's kindred was made known to Pharaoh. Then said Joseph to call his father Jacob to him. And all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died. He and our fathers. And were carried over in second, and laid in the falter that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emma, the father of second. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew of all the time in Egypt till another king arose, which do not know them. Where was the story? Anyone? Where was the story that not a king arose, which do not go? What woman? Okay. Okay. Ain't nothing new. Ain't nothing new. Nothing's changing here. Okay, so we have the book of Genesis. We have the book of Exodus. We're not going to find the exact same thing in the book of Exodus that was in Genesis because it's already taken out of Genesis. So likewise, we're going to do that. We're not going to find all the laws of Exodus. Why? It was already laid down in the book of the law of the prophets. So Jacob went down to Egypt and died in our fathers and were carried over in the sack, and they were the fault of Abraham and brought for some of money of the sons of Abraham and the father Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had more than Abraham, the people grew multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which do not know. The same he did dealt subtly with our kingdom, and he treated our fathers so that they cast out the young children to the end that they might not live. In which I Moses was born, I was exceeding fear, and nourished up in his father's house three months. 
and if he get his genealogy from his father, according to the New Testament, he didn't have a father, an earthly father. So the two genealogies that are recorded in the New Testament of Luke and in Matthew are the genealogy of Joseph. And if you read that, and I would like to read one two, if you look at Matthew, the first chapter. It says, in the very first verse, the book of the generation of A.C., the son of David, the son of Abraham. Then it shows you the entire genealogy of a particular person. But when you get to the 16th verse, it says, and Jacob, by Yahweh, begot yourself. My name is Jacob, begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born J.C., who is called Christ. So this is not the genealogy of Yeshua, or Christ, if you like. But this is not the genealogy of Joseph. Now, Joseph is not his father. Then why would you have Joseph and all the in here and say this is tracing Christ back to the tribe of Judah? How can you trace him back to Judah if Joseph is not his father? And you don't get your genealogy from your mother. And even if you did, so you're asking that question, I'm speaking. And even if you did get your genealogy from your mother, you can't trace Mary back to the tribe of Judah. So there is no record for that. Period. And most people are under the erroneous impression that it can be produced in a new testament that J.C. is shown to descend out of the tribe of David. There's two genealogies I tell to any individual in this house to take any genealogy in the entire new testament and trace J.C. to David. Yeah. 
uncertainty with us. Well, that is the children of Abraham. Now, the heavens shall praise thy wonder, the Lord, thy faithfulness, also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? And what I'm hearing right now is likening David unto the Lord. God is with to be fair to the of the saints, and he has a reverence all them that are about him. We got to understand that David, there was no other king like David. And if you go down to the 20th verse in that same psalm, it says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him, because he was anointed to be king, and king alone. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. And he did strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him. There's no other king that ruled like David. When David ruled, he had no enemies. Because there was no other nation that could have stood up the children of Israel. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his form be exalted. And it was exalted. I will set his hand also on the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, and my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. And he did make David higher than the kings of the earth, because every nation had to come, and like you said, bow down to the children of Israel, because they ruled over them. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed, again, his seed also will I make to endure forever. David's seed. The word of the old table is that anyone can answer. Then he had a king after David, I'm not talking with Saul, after David uh, ruled his brother, Jerusalem. That is with somebody else from some other tribe everywhere. Uh, anyone can answer that. Right, sure. I think there are many kings who ruled Israel and Jehuda as a nation. But there was only one king that the Almighty prophesied that would come back. Right, right, right. Right. My question was if you draw outside the line of the nation. No, we're looking at that question. Where they were taught that you're trying to make. Every king that sat on the throne came from the nation. Every king. Uh, so the passages of Babylon, every king, even in the, even in the second heaven, every king, king of the Lord of David, king of the seed of David. And I kind of went, I was glad that I heard my friend reading the fact that the Almighty told David, I'll make you my firstborn. David is the only man in the entire scriptures that the Almighty spoke of as an individual being his firstborn son. Now, the nation, we, we, we have a lot of glory to the I don't know if you want to do this. I don't know if you want to do this. I think it's like this. So, this is a different career for me. That's all I have for life. We have here, as I was saying, the only nation that the Almighty made is the firstborn son of the Israel. That's the only nation. The only tribe that the Almighty named his firstborn son is Ephraim. And the only individual that Yahweh ever named his firstborn son is David. Period. Period. There's not up. Now, we talk about the seed of David. I would like you to hear what the Almighty said about the seed of David and how he was differentiating David from his seed. And he said, Psalm 133. And Psalm 132, we find that it reads, I'll pick up at the, the next verse. Yahweh is born in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon my soul. Again, as I was saying. I'll pick up on the 11th verse. It says, David, Yahweh has sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy soul. So here the creator speaks of the fact that he's going to take the fruit of David's body and put it upon the soul. So let's finish reading. If yes, everything the Almighty ever promised Israel had condition. He never promised us nothing unconditional, not even death. 
we love to enjoy. And what this verse mean? Yeah. And nothing like that took place. Why? Because the children of Israel were 
disobedient again to the God of Israel. So therefore, the scripture you just read is not relevant to today or, or, or prophecy as a history that took place long ago. Just like in that, we, we all thought that we want to follow the commandments of God of Abraham and God of Isaac and God of Jacob. But what we actually know is we are trying to go against what he's saying. If you read Deuteronomy 20, chapter 16, verse, it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We know the scripture. We shall understand the scripture. Because of our disobedience, we know that that's why we are here enslaved today in the land of our people. By the way thereof, I pray unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. What does that mean? Thou shalt see that land no more again. But yet the great of that, trying to return to the land that's called Israel. That land that was cursed, the land that the word of God has told us that we shall not go. That we, the children of Israel, are here the land of our captivity. Children of Israel are here. The land was named after the people. After the people are taken out of the land, the land is called more Israel. Today it's called Israel. What is it really? Israel. Israel is not in the land. Israel is in the land of their captivity. So there's no land called Israel anywhere. We must understand the scripture when we read it. It says, I will bring thee to Egypt and get the ship by the way we are going to take unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and then you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. We want to go ahead of everything. We want to go ahead of the land of Israel. What we want to do is we don't want to wait for the 400 years, but no, we want to return to the land of Israel before the 400 years is up, thinking that we will be free, thinking that the curse will be gone, thinking that we, can, we will have peace. So that we will see that land no more again. What you have read in history that has passed, that has happened, we're looking now to the future, what is to come. Just because, just because the scripture says, and the prophet prophesied, the spirit of the Lord, he wants to be prophesied, but when did that prophecy happen? It had already taken place. That prophecy has been fulfilled. And it's like that in current Jerusalem, probably that it's in the new Jerusalem coming down.
on this day. We believe that the plight of the black man in America is not a tribute for an insolent act that has escaped the all seeing eye of the Almighty. But everything that has happened to us in this land, everything that we don't have to do, has already been prophesied. And the Almighty prophesied that we would be in this land for 400 years of punishment, and then he would bring us home. And home does mean Canada, New York, or Chicago. Home is the land of Canaan, where the Almighty, through his infallible word, through a preponderance of scriptural evidence, has said throughout all the groups that he's going to bring us back to Israel. Now, these gentlemen seem to be confused by something they read in the book of Deuteronomy, in the 28th chapter, the 64th verse, where they said, I'll bring you out of Egypt again by ships, and you should see it no more again. They did not know and did not realize they were talking about those particular people that uh, Moses made their prophecy to. But the Almighty was not speaking of the seed of Israel never seeing a promised land again. Because here the Almighty said, I'm going to take David, raise him up to be my king, place him in a land, and he shall rule in my kingdom in a land of Israel forever more. And we got some time to serve. And the only way you can get out of this is serve Yahweh, tell him only. And JC has no part in the Almighty's program. Uh, we teach that the Passover is very honorable, but we teach that it is against the Almighty's law to celebrate the Passover outside of Jerusalem today. And not only the Passover, the Feast of Eleven Bread has four as a feast of weeks in bread. But there are days that you keep in this land. Every Sabbath day, we ought to keep in all of our dwellings throughout our generations, every day of atonement in all of our dwellings, every new moon. You can keep, but you cannot keep the three grown only days that are mentioned specifically to be kept only in the land that the Almighty Place is named, which is Jerusalem today.
their salutation, this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive, conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and to his kingdom there shall be no end. Uh, I don't know if you want to read that. But what, what are we practicing here? This man has your red question to show him where they see what's king over Israel. That's nothing that he's asking him to say. They see what's king over Israel. And all of this is saying in the 33rd verse that he shall reign over the house of Israel forever. And his kingdom shall be no end. This is a future prophecy. Yeah, if you were sure that what they see was King of Israel. And so you know that's not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. It's not how you just have a future when he's born. Yes, he wasn't born yet. You're right, he was not born yet. Um, I'm just a little bit confused. As a teacher, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, let's go to the teacher. He said they don't use the back of the book, and if the followers say that the back of the book is still mentality. Okay? I mean, it's what it is, that's what they are, still mentality. But TK, when you are using the word, you speak in English, and then you are speaking some other words that I don't understand. I think I can say it's that people. Where did you get that from? Is that from the same white people that you say that the same mentality? I'm just confused. Are you not like me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You asked a few questions. One about the language of speaking and another about the language of book. Well, I'll deal with the last question first. Regardless of whether it is our language is very possible. I've been speaking English all day. A couple of times I showed the pronunciation of Jacob's name by saying Yaakov, but that was early. And then after I said Yaakov, I defined it as Jacob in English. So I never spoke in a language that no one in this room could understand. I'm not guilty of that, sir. And for is our, our people studying the Almighty Word and it alone. We don't study the back of the book of the New Testament because it is not the word of the Almighty. The New Testament was not written by the Almighty or any of its holy prophets. And nowhere will you find in the New Testament any verse that says, Thus saith Yahweh, or thus saith the Lord, or the word of Elohim came unto me, or the word of God came unto me. You will only find what Peter and Paul say. We will not command to follow what any man says, but only what thus saith Yahweh. The Almighty's words are absent in this book. When the creator of the heaven gave to Satan the authority to write his own book, he did not give him permission to use his name in his book. And nowhere do you find any prophet, any disciple, any apostle, there I tell you what thus said Yahweh. His word is absent. This is a book of men and not the book of the Swiss. Oh, what a
house and he screamed out, my father, my father, why have you not forsaken me? And this is worse than an isolated out of a whole text in the New Testament that's a different language. And that means that they were not even speaking that language as a conversation. And these, these individual words have the accident. Uh, so the yeah, that's due to the translation of the Bible we have all these words in the Bible that we have now one from another from translating in the English, sir. But that doesn't imply that uh, they would have to speak in the tongue. But uh, I'll make this observation. I, I see that some of the people here, they, they're afraid of their culture, they're afraid of keeping the law, they're somehow afraid they need to call other Israelites, they need the world recognize the Israelites and all they've been doing. Like the Colossians, Jews, and Ethiopians, you know, these brothers of mine have always kept the Sabbath day. They have always, as far as the world goes, they have always accepted circumcision. They have always followed the dietary law. These people were ostracized, discriminated, and exploited, and suffocated by the Ethiopians. You all have the audacity to say they can't prove it. That's what the world has said about you. You can't prove it. So that's why they are in your mentality. That's going outside the question. Nobody here has said that. Nobody's nobody is saying that the 
daughter Paul's is not his name. Nobody is saying that the destroyer is not his name. Nobody is saying that Jehovah is not his name. But we know that righteousness is following instructions. Now, what instructions did he give you to call him? He says in the sixth verse, sixth chapter of Exodus, that by my name, Jehovah, was I not known. So he said that, yes, my name is Jehovah, but your fathers didn't even know me by that name. But when Moses was on the mountain, he said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This is my name for every for all generation, and this is what you should tell the children of Israel in which to call me. So I am not saying that Psalm 68 is wrong. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that I would rather follow the instructions that was given to call him. Now, before I go on, I'm going to allow the second question to be answered. Yeah, I was just saying that, obviously, I don't know if this brother's in your congregation. There was some confusion on why we say Yahweh. I've had people ask me all day yesterday. So that's not consistent with the statement you just made. But the fact that people were questioning why we were saying Yahweh. I see English, sir. I understand that. And this is in English, sir. It says J A H. Isn't your alphabet J? Yes, well, I mean, okay, then. But well, 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 so well, let's not get into. You know, that Yahweh is an English, that's how you say it with English talk. Sir, I'm just telling you that I speak English, and even if there's an English name in there, even if there's an English name in there that says this is the name of God, I was never given the instruction to call him by that name. So I will not. I that's all I'm saying. Please ask a second question. I'm number one. You ask a second question about 400 years. Now, the 400 years says that you will be enslaved for 400 years. It says that you will be in a land for 400 years. And right. there you shall so be enslaved. It's quoted that verse wrong, sir. It says you will be in a land for 400 years. That means that you will only be there for 400 years. That lets me know that you're going somewhere else. The scripture speaks for itself. It says lame. It doesn't say it's lame. Can I ask? Am I about to say it? Thou shalt serve it. But add up. But include the whole verse. Read the whole verse. Read that verse that fits true. It says you shall be in a land for 400 years. And while you are in that land, you will serve those strangers. But it lets you know the totality is of you being in that land. If you're going to look at it verbatim, do you still have a shackle around your neck right now? No, I have no shackle. You don't. So that means, so that means when, when slavery ended, that's when the 400 years should have ended? Or are you going to look at it verbatim? I'm looking at it with the Almighty Man, what he said. And you know, and I know, those 400 years are up. That's right. Oh, but the same, oh, but the shackle is the same. That yoke of iron has been taken off her hand. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to Can I tell me why you're looking at it? Go ahead. I'm going to talk about those mistakes. One, the gentleman said that he didn't have no scriptures where he was told to call the Almighty Yachts. But if you look at Psalm 684, it says, sing unto him again, saying praises to his name, and call, to call him that rise upon his heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. And as this is capitalized, it's here, J-A-H, and we all know that there were no days on this earth until the 1500s. There was no day sound, and we don't have no day sound in Hebrew. There was no ticket, there's not a hope, there is no joke, there's not a joke, sir, you're, you're, you're being reasonable, I respect you, okay, uh, so, we know that this should be Yah, and as the brother said, when you say, hallelujah, Yah, you praise the Almighty's name, you'll never be when said, hallelujah, Lord, or hallelujah, God, this is not his name, his name is Yah, and if you don't know nothing else, I'm asking people to respect what they know in my Psalm 68 4 because he is the creator and he deals the sacred names for those that truly can it first. And then, and I know my second point, my second point. I think that what he just read in Psalm 68, he misunderstood. Well, I'm going to say to myself, you want to be a video. What are you doing? You're a video. You're a video. You're a video. Sure. 
we should read this book in the foreign language. As a matter of fact, I said I study and read the King James Version of Bible. The King James, please let me answer the question. I don't mind letting you talk and listening to you as I do, but you must allow me a chance to answer the question I'm interrupting. Thank you. Now, as I had said, or attempted to say, uh, this book, the King James Bible, has brought our people a mighty long way. And uh, it helped me show our people who they were, the point of things in the Bible that some of the modern books have taken out. This book has served me well, and it's and still serving me well. But it reaches a point where we have to go beyond the King James Version of the Bible. And we have went beyond that point. Now, one day, our people as a whole will go beyond King James, and then they will be reading maybe the King David version of the Bible, or the King Ezekiel version of the Bible. Well, this is not the epitome of the truth. There are many hypocrisies in this book, though it has brought us a mighty low way. There's still inaccuracies in that I can point out.
this verse that I was mentioning. It said in the 49th chapter, the 22nd verse, Thus saith Yahweh of him, Behold, I will lift up my head to the Gentiles, and set up my standards to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their horns, and their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and their king shall be thy nursing father, and their queen shall be thy nursing mother. And they shall bow down to thee and lick up. They shall bow down to thee with their faces toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Should the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive be delivered? But thus said Yahweh, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For well, I will contend with them that contend with thee, and I will save thy children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, and with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, Yahweh, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Yahweh. Gentiles. 